Okay, yeah, that's good. I want to be a cool double angle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Production values. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, could you first give the viewers a bit of an introduction of yourself? Uh, my name is Jody Rathgeb, and I am a retired writer who um, got into mosaic art before I retired and kind of kept up the mosaic since then. Mm -hmm. So, who are your favorite artists? Um, I would have to, I tend to go with modern people, Chagall for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chihuly, another glass artist, mm -hmm. but completely different type of glass. Um, I think those are my two big ones. Mm -hmm. And I tend, when I go to the MFA, um, we, we tend to go to the modern section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so what has your art journey been like? Like, did you take art classes in school um, overall? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> other than, like, public school art, mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> um, I was headed toward college, I was always interested in writing, and the artist in the family was my sister, mm -hmm. who became an art teacher, and uh, she's retired now too. Um, I was always interested in the arts, all different types of things. I got into theater when I was in college. Um, but the visual arts, I, I just dabbled, I played with different things. Um, I tried different media, and I think I think that that was the important thing that led me to mosaic. Mm -hmm. um, I tried making jewelry, which I didn't like because it was so fiddly, mm -hmm. um, and I tried soap making, painting. I'm not a painter. I still have some paintings around here, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, I realized that it's not my medium. When I started doing mosaic as an apprentice with Lorraine Mead, it clicked. It was like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is the, th the medium that engages me the most. I lose myself when I'm working on a mosaic. And there's nothing else in the head but mosaic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, that's the important thing for me, right, losing myself sure. in it. Um, so what was the apprenticeship? Uh, okay, Lorraine Mead uh, is a mosaic artist mm -hmm. also in Richmond. Mm -hmm. She used to have a studio right across the hall. Oh, nice. And one day Tom and I were walking around here in Artworks mm -hmm. just looking at things. And in her studio, I recognized her work from shows that I had gone to in mm -hmm. Richmond. And in her studio was a little sign saying that she was looking for an apprentice. And if it interested to email her, which I did, and she and I met, and she explained, you know, what she did and everything, and said, here, try this out, and I started working with her that way. I was initially just assisting on pieces that she was doing. Mm -hmm. I was doing the tile cutting and some gluing according to her direction, mm -hmm. and we grouted together, and we worked together for a long time, and then you know she start she was encouraging me all along to use her materials her tools to try my own things mm -hmm. and i started doing some of my own things i was the apprentice that never left i mean i eventually i would just come to the studio here and work on my stuff she would work on her stuff mm -hmm. if she was in a crunch where she had a commission that had to get done i would like do things for her as well and in return, I got free studio stuff and yeah. materials and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, um, so what is your process? Do you want to know how to make mosaics or, or are you interested in how mm. I make mosaics? I mean, you can talk about both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, the basic mosaic technique is you have a substrate, something to put things on, mm -hmm. and it can be 3D or it can be flat. This is flat. The trombone behind me is 3D. Right. <laughs> that is a trombone. <laughs> so uh, that's substrate. And onto the substrate, you glue tessera. The tessera are generally, most mosaic artists use glass tile, stained glass, or ceramic tile. And ceramic tile can also mean broken up dishes, mm -hmm. the picassette. 
um, you glue it on. We use, I use uh, a good construction glue in my work. You can also use thin set, which is basically a construction material. It's a cement product that has adhesive properties. So you can also, in addition to gluing on tiles individually, you could also spread thin set on your substrate and then place the tiles on. And then after everything is dry, then you grout. That grout is the stuff in between. If you look at a tile floor, you see grout. It's the same stuff. It's the same stuff that they use when they're building a house. Um, so that's the basic thing. Then, and then you clean off the, the grout from the tile and you have your piece. Right. Now, um, most mosaic artists, modern mosaics, like we're not talking about the ancient right. stuff, which is cool, but most mosaic artists tend to concentrate on pattern and color. And, um, well, the things I started doing for Lorraine are kind of like that. My mirror where, you know, she does a lot of mirror uh, backgrounds. Mm -hmm. It's pattern, it's color, it's you know, that sort of thing. I branch out a little bit in that I started trying to do things that were a little more realistic, a little more um, saying something, a little more feeling and thought rather than pattern and design. Right. So I think my approach is what do I want to do a mosaic of? Do I want to do um, a reef? Or if I have this trombone to do as my substrate, it's like, ooh, a trombone. How can I make a trombone into a mosaic? And I thought about the slide, the fluidity of it. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, fluid, I'll just have like blues dripping mm -hmm. all down the, the thing. That, right. That is kind of my approach to to get a little bit of thought of the end product and some feeling into it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, so, what do you find is your biggest challenge when making your work? <laughs> Keeping from cutting myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mosaic is a very hands-on mm -hmm. art, and you do a lot of work with glass and a lot of cutting, so you use a lot of band aids. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> Um, and then, so what's your favorite piece that you've ever made, like if you had to pick one? Or you can pick multiple. I was thinking about that and it's almost like each new thing is my favorite. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's but, good. you know, there are some that, okay, if, if this thing sold behind me, I would be sorry to see it go. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like looking at it. It's like an old friend. Mm -hmm. um, there are other things that I like very much. and. I don't mind letting go of them. Um, I like that piece a lot. Mm -hmm. I like the ones with my cat that I put my cats into. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't have a favorite piece. There's one that may be called my favorite. It it uh, lives in a restaurant in the Turks and Caicos Islands now. It's a big conch shell, mm -hmm. and I. I think it might be my favorite because it was really the first time that I was able to get something my, that was in my head onto, onto uh, the substrate. Using limited resources. Mm -hmm. In the Turks and Caicos where I made that, I can't get glass tile unless I drag it down myself in my suitcase. Mm -hmm. um, but in the Turks and Caicos, there's plenty of ceramic tile in the dump. So, you know, you kind of go dumpster diving right, and, yeah. and tell friends that are doing renovations in houses, save your tile, save your mm -hmm. tile. So I have a whole big bunch of leftover cracked tile in my garage mm -hmm. that I kind of rooted through to find the right colors to make a conch shell. And that was limited resources, and I was just very, very happy with the result. Mm -hmm. The pinks and beiges and whites kind of all came together. Mm -hmm.
So what have some of your favorite like experiences been that you've gotten, I guess, to do with mosaics? Like I think I saw on your Facebook that when you, you worked with a class of students, right? And you like made a flag. Like, yes. Could you talk about some of those experiences? That was fun. I kind of kind of got roped into that. I didn't initiate the idea to do anything with the school kids. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine who's a teacher said, would you do something with the school kids? Mm -hmm. So we put together the idea of I would do a flag, but they would help with the flag. Mm -hmm. And they did the center of it. And it worked out beautifully. I really, really enjoyed doing that. The kids were great. I think that was like 90% of it. That They, they were super good and that they got into it and at the end when the teacher had them say what was their favorite part it was all a part of making mosaics it wasn't the snack mm -hmm. <laughs> so i really like that yeah. <laughs> um and i'm probably going to do another one down there with the kids mm -hmm. i have always resisted doing classes um most those eight classes are for adults. There are several nights, and I don't know, it's a little too formal. Mm -hmm. So I did like that. Um, I did a birthday party mosaic project for my grandniece, and that was a disaster. <laughs> the kids were a little bit too young, and um, their focus wasn't there. And there were other things, and plus they had been sugared up, so it was it was a little crazy. I yeah. I didn't plan it well enough, and control well enough. So I'll try doing more with with children, mm -hmm. um, which surprises me because I never thought of myself as like a teacher of mm -hmm. that ilk. Yeah. So you talked with your clan shell, how like you like worked from limited resources. How do you pick your materials, or like? I guess, what's your process for, like, getting what you use and stuff? Okay, well, um, first of all, I think about what the project is going to be. If I use this thing as an example, mm -hmm. I have the, the parrot. Mm -hmm. it, that is like a piece of costume jewelry. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do a thing with the parrot in the jungle that would show the rainforest fading away mm -hmm. in some way. So instead of a fading away, I decided, well, that is so colorful, I'll do the jungle, the, the rainforest, all in black and white, mm -hmm. with maybe a little bit of hint of color there, with that greenish kind of thing. Um, so then it was a matter of, okay, to get a, a lot of variation in black and white, I'm not going to use glass mosaic tiles because you can't get a, a variety of colors. Mm -hmm. You have a white, you have black, and you have gray. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can get some shades and everything. Stained glass was a better choice for that. So I keep a stash here of stained glass uh, pieces, mm -hmm. uh, many of which came from, uh, from other glass artists. There is a um, a glass artist right next to me here mm -hmm. and she just recently gave me a bunch of scrap mm -hmm. so I, I keep all that so I was able to go through and pick out the different um, shades and colors and, and that sort of thing and then the final question was do you have any advice for aspiring artists or art professionals um, first of all find your medium mm -hmm. and don't be thinking of the career thing right off the bat because art is very hard to make money from um, unless you're going into commercial art, design, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, do it for the love of it. And I guess if you are going to be a professional about it, if you do want to sell your art, take some classes in marketing and, and that sort of thing because mm -hmm. that's I have no clue how to market. Mm -hmm. None whatsoever. I don't know. Even with writing, I didn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, yeah. But learn a little bit of the business, mm -hmm. business side, mm -hmm. as well as the art side. 
I guess that's my best, my best shot at advice. Okay. Art should be fun. Um, it's not all seriousness. You know, you can have fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think as long as you're finding the right medium, it will be fun for you. Mm -hmm. No matter if you become a starving artist or a successful artist, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, so and that concludes the interview. Okay. Do you mind if I take pictures of like some of your artwork? Heavens no. Okay. Perfect. Not at all. <laughs>